Americans are on the move. Statistically, we have seen the population moving from certain parts of the US to others. This has always happened. However, today it seems as though the trend has increased in pace and there are certain patterns that can't be ignored. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at the top 10 states that Americans are abandoning. I'm going to show you the list first and then we're going to go into some of the reasons why. So let's begin by taking a look at this. Number 10, Wisconsin. Number 9, Utah. Number 8, Kentucky. Number 7, Ohio. Number 6, Massachusetts. Number 5, Kansas. Number 4, Connecticut. Number 3, New York. Number 2, New Jersey. And number 1, Illinois. These are the top 10 states that people are moving from right now and I will go into the details of why this is happening. Essentially what we have today is that certain states are often much more expensive than others. We have seen this, it's always been this way, but certain areas are much more friendly for business, for taxes, for expenses, and others are making it worse and worse. This is a big problem not just for those in low income, but also for those who are high income earners. That is very clear. So we'll look into some of those. This article here out of Bloomberg essentially is talking about taxation as well as the fact that now there is a cap of $10,000 on how much Americans can deduct in state and local taxes. So those higher income earners are not able to utilize this as much as they were before. And obviously it's making it difficult for them to keep their wealth. Right at the bottom of the first paragraph, the thought of moving to a low tax state may suddenly look more attractive. They get into the details of how they are pursuing this from an auditing standpoint and you can see this ensuring taxpayers pay their fair share is a top priority therefore our non-resident audit program continues to be very active they want to ensure that people are paying their taxes that's for sure let's take a look at this next one New Yorkers pay an average of 12.7% on their income in state and local taxes and face some of the highest property taxes in the nation. New York City, where more than 40% of the state population lives, is the most expensive city in America. But that comes at a price because, as they suggest, it's no wonder why people are fleeing in droves, with 1.2 million New Yorkers leaving since 2010. Many people don't want to believe this because when they're out in the city, there are people everywhere. They see people in the stores, people in the restaurants, people shopping, people walking around. And they don't understand that this has become a trend. So many people have been leaving certain areas of the United States, and this is only getting worse as time goes on. Last year, New York had the largest overall population loss in the nation. As residents continue to leave, the huge hole in the state budget will only increase. New York, of course, is just one of those states that's having some serious problems with their budget. And of course, as more people are leaving, it's going to create a bigger hole. And what do they do? Well, they increase taxes on the people who remain. That's the way it works. Unfortunately, there are no solutions that they're able to provide. Everyone's newest favorite politician, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, her mother actually left in order to go to Florida, and that is leaving New York. She had to go to a lower tax state. Check this out. I was paying $10,000 a year in real estate taxes up north. I'm paying $600 a year in Florida. It's stress-free down here. You've seen many people that have done this, of course. They are leaving the higher tax areas and they're going to a place that is significantly cheaper. Those real estate taxes, it's not as if you're paying down to a mortgage. It's not as if it's going to benefit you down the road. We're talking about taxes that are just going into a bottomless pit. Spiraling entitlements, unwieldy pension costs, money wasted on high-speed rail, inadequate water shortage and delivery, and lax policies were formerly tolerable only because about 150,000 Californians paid huge but federally deductible state income taxes. 
no more. Californians may have once derided the state's 1% as selfish rich people. Now they are praying that these heavily burdened taxpayers stay put and are willing to pay far more than what they had paid before. Obviously, we're going to see this continue. We have already seen that with California as well, although we do have a lot of external migration coming into California, making up for the shortfall. But of course, statistically, those who are paying the taxes, we have, I believe, the top 1% paying approximately half of the entire taxes for the state of California. That is, of course, completely unsustainable. This article is talking about Illinois, one that I have talked about extensively over the years, the pension problems, the government is falling apart, and there's some details in here everybody needs to know. Every time a worker departs, the tax burden on those of us who remain grows. That's what people don't understand. If you push people away, particularly those who are paying the highest percentage of taxes, you're going to have a problem because they are not going to make up for the shortfall. And and then you realize the hard way why there's not enough money coming in. Not only has the flight of citizens continued for a fifth straight year, the population loss is intensifying. This year's estimated net reduction of 45,000 residents is the worst of these five losing years. This continues to happen because the situation gets worse. If you live in Illinois, you know exactly what I'm going to talk about. I have heard from many, many people who have told me what they pay for their property taxes, and it is absurd. It's beyond absurd. This should be criminal how much they charge people to basically rent their home. That's the way that it has been going for quite some time. They are only aiming to increase taxes. If you look at all the different quote-unquote solutions they have provided for their pensions, for everything else, it has been an increase in taxes. I have no possible way to discern why they would ever try to do this to fix the problem of higher taxes. This is not never ever going to be fixed by implementing these policies. There are many ways that they could solve this, but what they've come up with so far is absolutely not going to work. New Jersey governor pushes millionaire tax in budget address. What I find funny is what he wrote at the bottom here, and that is, this is not a tax that will be paid by anyone in the middle class, but it is revenue that is necessary to strengthen and expand the middle class. I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that. However, there is no tax that has ever been put in that didn't eventually make its way onto everybody else. The middle class has to feel the burden of absolutely everything. It does, in fact, have a negative impact, and unfortunately, they never realize that. Don't worry, income tax is just a temporary solution to the problem. We're gonna get rid of it soon enough. Don't worry, just pay it right now. Only you, only you at the very top, you will pay the income taxes, and then, oh, wait a minute, it's actually the bracket under that. And okay, then everybody's gotta pay their fair share, but don't worry, your bracket is lower. You won't get charged as much. They're gonna be paying most of it. And this type of behavior gets pushed out in in every state, in every province, in every country, we see the exact same mess. An Arizona Occupational Welcome Arizona last year attracted more than 122,000 newcomers, many fleeing states with crushing regulation and taxes. Basically, this is one of very few states that is allowing business to flourish. They are accepting people. The taxation is generally lower. The regulations are lower as well. I'm not suggesting by any means that it's perfect, that it's a utopia. I'm not going into that at all. What I am saying is that certain areas are seeing an influx of people because it's much more affordable on many levels. And that should be a lesson to everybody the way things work. You can't just force it on people and especially the actual corporations themselves. They can move anywhere. A corporation doesn't need to stay put. They don't need to pay their taxes in any particular state. They can move it out. They can do things today that they couldn't do years ago. What you should do is try and do your best to get them to stay, to get them to actually benefit from your favorable policies, but they don't do that in most cases, unfortunately. Well, that's all for this video. If you found this 
informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you are supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. Last but not least, if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything that you need. You can get all the details at the link in the description. I talk about the foundation, the history, the asset classes, making money, so much more. You can check that out at the link. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to find out about the 5,000 stores that are closing in the United States, you have to watch this video. I get into all the details. Click on it and I will see you there.